Okay, so we're now Autodesk Inventor 2016, and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do some 3D modeling. So we're going to go ahead to New. Whoops, not to New. We're going to go to the drop down. We're going to click Part. Okay, so the so we still start a 3D model the same as we did a 2D sketch. So we're going to go ahead and click 2D sketch. We can place our sketch on any of the planes. In this case, we're doing the XZ plane. Oops, and I dragged a little bit. There it is. Okay, so to start off with, all we're going to do is we're going to make a rectangle with a circle in it. So I'm going to click, move the mouse, click, and then we're going to dimension our rectangle, of course, because we never do anything without dimensioning it. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to dimension the other side. We're still in the dimensioning tool. We're going to right click, move the mouse, click to place the dimension, and we're going to make that one inch. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to, um, to take a circle, and we're going to put a circle right in the middle there. Now notice the dotted lines. Now this is kind of a cheat, so well, I don't want to say a cheat, but so notice the dotted lines. That says we're halfway um, across the width and halfway across the height. So we can click there for the center, pull it out, then we're going to go ahead. In reality, we have to dimension a couple things really to place our circle. So we're going to go ahead and say that the circle is 0.5 inches radius and then we can go ahead and we can go from the um, we can make we can dimension from the circle to the line so notice that I click the circle then the line I'm gonna pull that dimension out and notice that it's already 0.5 so I didn't really have to do anything because of those dotted lines that I saw earlier um, and then I'm going to do the circle to the um, the vertical line notice that that's one inch Okay, I'm going to click the green check. Now, technically, I should be pulling these outside of the figure. Um, you'll find some people are very, very, very sensitive about where things are located on the model, um, which is fine. Um, so what we can do is we right-click OK, and then we can actually move those dimensions out once we're not in the dimensioning tool. Okay, so you want to keep your models kind of organized just like this. Um, Okay, so we have our rectangle, we have our circle. Now, to create a 3D model, we actually have to finish the sketch. Okay, so once I've drawn everything that I want to draw in the sketch, uh, I'm going to click Finish Sketch. Notice that I don't draw everything that I want. So if I was drawing a complex part, I'm not going to draw everything that I want in that part. It's just one 3D feature, and hopefully you'll, you'll know more what I'm talking about in just a second. So, so it's just one extrusion. In this case, we're going to do an extrusion or some other 3D feature. So let's go ahead and click Finish Sketch. So now we're in 3D mode. So notice that I can take this block and notice that the 2D sketch really is just a plane, right? It doesn't have any thickness. All right, now to add thickness to it, we're gonna use an extrusion. So I go ahead and click Extrusion, and I'm going to select, notice it's gonna be hard to see in the video, but as I, as I mouse over that um, face there, or the, the enclosed area in the sketch. It has to be an enclosed area, so that enclosed area. Notice that it leaves out the circle, another enclosed area inside the sketch. Now I could add that area in the circle if I wanted to. Um, I could also deselect it, hopefully. Oh, not let me deselect, so let's cancel. So I clicked Extrude. I'm gonna click the, the face that I want. Notice that um, if I zoom out, Notice that it gives me a, um, a preview of the um, object as it will be after it extrudes. So let's say in this case I want a 0.5 extrusion. So notice I can do it two places, right? So I can do this kind of heads-up display, or I can do the, um, or I can do this uh, uh, dialog if I wanted to. I can also change the direction that it is extruding. Okay, and I can go ahead and click OK. So notice that in my um, browser bar, notice that that extrusion consumes Sketch 1. So I can't use Sketch 1 for anything else except that one extrusion. So that's where a lot of people have problems, is they think that they can make a lot of stuff in one sketch and then, and then apply 3D effects to it. But in fact, you can only use one sketch for one 3D effect. Okay. Let's go ahead and create a second sketch. So a sketch can live anywhere on a 3D extrusion that's a flat face. So in fact, because a sketch is 2D, I can actually put a sketch onto 
um, onto the face of the object. Okay, so I can click to the sketch button and then click on the face of the object. And now that sketch, if I use the cube here, you can see that that sketch actually lives on the face of that object. Okay. So now we're going to continue on with the extrusion. So notice that I'm now in Sketch 2. So keep an eye on your browser bar over here. So I'm inside Sketch 2. I'm going to go ahead and create a, um, a rectangle. Whoops. Um, and in this case, you know what? Let's go ahead and click the down arrow on the rectangle. I'm actually going to create a polygon. Okay, and it's going to be a six-sided polygon. Okay, so I'm going to click, drag, and click. Okay, and notice that if I want that to be horizontal, I can go ahead and, and specify one of the sides to be horizontal. I can right click OK. Notice that I'm, see that my top when I went in the sketch was actually not horizontal there, now horizontal. Okay, so I can move that polygon. I can also uh, dimension against the lines in the other sketches. Okay, so let's say that I want um, this distance to be exactly 0.25. And I want this side of the polygon to be exactly 0.25. Okay. I could also have, if I wanted to measure the distance between the points in the polygon, I could have done that as well. Okay, so I want the overall dimension of the polygon to be 0.5. Let's do that. Okay, so I have my sketch. Notice that it's just sitting there on the 3D object. And now I'm going to do an extrude cut. Okay, now to get back to the 3D features, I'm going to click Finish Sketch. Then I'm going to click Extrude. And I'm going to, and notice that because it's the only enclosed face, it's automatically selected. Okay, so now notice that my extrusions, I can do a different kind of extrusion. If I'm in the dialog, whoops, if I'm in the dialog here, notice that it's a cut. So there I'm making a hole. Okay, that cut can be all the way, like from to another face, or it can be all, which means it just goes through every object in your drawing. Okay, or we'll set the distance. Usually, it's the it's the it's the um, depth of the thing that the hole is sitting on. Or I can do an intersect. Okay, an intersect means you only leave material where the two, where the extrusion you're making and the previous extrusion are located. So in this case, it would just leave the, the polygon itself. Okay. Okay, in this case, we're going to leave it a cut, and we're going to go ahead and click OK. All right, so now we have our two extrusions. Okay, so we have our initial extrusion, which left a hole in the, in the uh, block there in our rectangular solid. We also made a second extrusion. We made a second sketch, and we made a polygon in that sketch and extruded, extrude cut a hole into the rectangle. Now let's say that we wanted to change the sketch somehow. Let's say that we decide that, oh, the dimensions on the rectangle are wrong. Okay, so how we can do that is we can actually use our browser bar to go in and edit anything that we want. So if we double click sketch one, notice that sketch one comes up. Let's say that I want to make this two inches instead of one inch. Let's say I want to make the circle larger. Uh, let's say that I want to make the circle uh, two inches instead of one inch. Oops. Or sorry, let's say that I want to make. Let's say that I want to make the circle a radius of one inch instead of 0.5 inches. And I move it over to the center of the drawing. Okay. All right, so there we are. The other thing that I noticed uh, that I didn't show before was that you can also make um, dimensions. Uh, functions of another dimension. So let's say that I want to take this dimension here. So notice how it's one inch. I, would, I want these to always be the same, let's say. I want the, the dimension from the circle to the vertical line to be the same as the circle to the um, horizontal line. I can double click that dimension. I can just click on another dimension. And notice it changes it to the name of that dimension, so to D3. I can click a, click a check mark. Now notice that when I change this dimension now, let's say I change it to 0.5, Notice that both dimensions change now that it's called a driven dimension. And let's change it back to one. Okay, so now I've changed the dimension of the rectangle kind of severely, right? So 
Let's go ahead and see what happens. So we click Finish Sketch. And what happens is Inventor goes ahead and it actually changes the extrusion to match the sketch. So here's our final product. Okay, so that is extruding a 3D object. Um, so go ahead and give it a shot.